Hi, my name is Don March and I work with Cody, Vandy and Steven at Oak Ridge National Lab. And we've been working on a framework called Lattice, which lets us automatically generate large amounts of synthetic data sets where Lattice can construct every example in the data sets along with perfect labels for every example. To explain some of the motivation that led to writing Lattice to begin with, here's an example training set that I used Lattice to generate. And I forced there to be a problem in this data set, which is that every object is free to fall partially off the edge of the image, except for circles. Circles are always completely visible in the training set. If you train a neural network or some other machine learning model to do a task on this data set, like is the circle above all the other shapes, and then apply that model to a test set where the same constraints for circles don't hold, then that model is going to have trouble generalizing. <clears throat> this is an example of a subtle problem which is almost impossible to not have in any finite high dimensional data set. But in a real life data set, you're only going to have one particular instance of this problem. With synthetic data, you can have examples of the same problem applied exactly the same way to a variety of data sets. For example, every image on this slide is isomorphic to a million other images in different data sets where you substitute circles with spheres or trees or buildings or where you use all of these same shapes but put them on different backgrounds. And there's a bunch of other variants and you can inject this particular problem, this type of bias, into all of those domains the same way, just by describing this problem once programmatically. Here's another type of problem that you run into with real life machine learning data sets. If these photographs are a portion of some training data and you want to make classification or object detection models, then the problem that you'll have is that cars and cobras are usually in certain places on a road or in the wilderness. Eventually, the machine learning models that you train on this data will be applied to examples where those contextual clues can't be relied on. Even if you know that, even if it's somehow a given that you need to have models that do better at finding cobras in the bathroom, then you're not going to be able to find enough imagery to put in your data set to fix that problem. You can do a Google image search for cobras in the bathroom and you'll find a screen full of disturbing imagery, but that's not enough to train an object detection model for that type of object in that new different context. So one way that people address this problem with synthetic data is to try to generate pictures of stuff that are missing in the training data and put them in the training set. But it's hard and time consuming and you're not going to think of modeling every situation that actually matters. And even if you did, this guy is out to prove you wrong. So I think that a better or at least complementary use of synthetic data is to model this problem and other problems like it in a lot of different ways and in different domains. For example, you can model the problem of contextual dependencies with video games by randomly generating levels using the sprites, the background sprites from different game universes. For example, Zelda and Mario, and then put Link in the worlds that you generated from the Zelda sprites and put Mario in the Mario worlds, train object detection models, and then generate examples of worlds with Mario and Link in them, but where you did the reverse, where you put Link in the Mario levels and where you put Mario in the Zelda levels. See how that impacts the performance of your model and try to come up with ways that handle that problem gracefully. Okay, let me switch to talking about Lattice and its implementation. I'll just share a few of the most simple domains that Lattice is capable of generating, starting with this set of all images of a certain size with a black background and with a white circle and square drawn somewhere randomly in the image. When you implement this in, in Lattice, then it gives you a, sim a sampleable object that you can call a randon, just like a distribution or a vector or a set. The way that that is implemented is by adding a sampling method that tells you how to put together a data structure that represents a random example in the domain that you really want to sample from. You get a latent representation when you call rand on the latent domain of the distribution. And then when you call decode on that representation, it's projected into the actual data domain. Just with this simple contrived data set of black and white images containing two simple shapes, 
It's possible to think of a bunch of interesting tasks, which are simple for you and me to programmatically implement and that are useful for machine learning research. It's easy for us to program because all of the data that you need is neatly packaged up in the data structure for the latent representation. So to create a task, to implement a task in Lattice, you just need to define a function that takes one of those latent representations as input and gives you the target or the label for that representation and the example that it represents as output. Let me show a few ways that Lattice can automatically generalize that first simple black and white circle square domain. It can either let shapes be filled in instead of just being hollow, or it can let shapes be other, other colors instead of just white, or it can do both of those at the same time. It can allow fill and color. You can turn off the constraint that was turned on in the previous examples that prevented shapes from overlapping. And Lattice can include a lot more shapes in an image, which then lets you ask additional questions of additional complexity. All of these examples together form a lattice of domains, where the initial black and white circle square domain is the simplest domain, and it's nested within all of these other distributions and domains, which nest within other domains of higher complexity. Another really quick, simple example of a family of domains that Lattice can automatically generate is tic-tac-toe games. It can start by putting circles and squares or any two symbols or other drawable objects into squares to represent the plays that players make. Or it can choose from a set of objects like polygons with an even number of sides and polygons with an odd number of sides to represent the moves of the players. Or equations that are true and equations that are false or images of puppies and images of kittens. And all of these examples that I just flipped through are the same game where the first player won by taking all the squares along the diagonal and they have the same latent representation, but it's more difficult for a neural network to learn how to perform the, the tasks that you might want to learn on this data set, like what's the next best move, um, depending on the complexity of the imagery domain that that representation is projected into. So I think that that's enough examples to describe the big picture for Lattice, which is you don't have to describe each of these domains to generate them. You just say, I want pictures of tic-tac-toe games, and I want you to pick anything that you know how to draw and put those things in the squares. And I already told you how to manipulate and transform and augment those drawable things. So go ahead and do that when you make the tic-tac-toe domains. And you know what? Go ahead and do that in different ways with different probabilities depending on what the label for that example should be, but only when you make the training set, not when you make the test set. And then once you've explained how to do all of that, then Lattice can go ahead and do the same exact thing to generate lattices of domains for backgammon or chess or checkers or whatever abstract board games, applying the same logic that it used to generate a lattice of imagery domains based on tic-tac-toe. So we're really interested in sharing this code and there are a few more steps in our approval process that we have to go through before we can do that. But I went ahead and made this GitHub repo where you can click follow in order to get a notification when we release the code. And in the meantime, if any of you have any questions about Lattice or wanna to talk to us about the National Lab or Julia or anything, then please feel free to contact me or my co-authors. Thank you very much.